Perhaps your naturopath or integrative medicine doctor told you that you have low stomach acid, or maybe you've done some Google sleuthing and you've determined that this is something you should pay attention to and try out. Either way, you're in the right place. Let's get started and talk all about low stomach acid. On a day-to-day -day basis, our stomachs are very acidic with a pH of about two or three. Now, I'm not gonna get into the chemistry of what an acid is and what a base is and what pH actually means. All you need to know is that the lower the pH, the stronger the acid. And that's really what I'm talking about. But for simplicity's sake, the way that people usually talk about this is low stomach acid versus adequate or high stomach acid. So I'm gonna use that context and I'm going to choose to represent this visually with more of a scale like the thermometer scale where low would be somewhere down here and high would fill in the entire thing. And I'll do that using the stomach that I've drawn. Now, with low stomach acid, what is frequently recommended by integrative medicine doctors and naturopaths is an at-home test called the HCL challenge. And what they'll usually instruct you to do, and I do this with my patients as well, is we'll send you home with some supplements that contain betaine HCL or a supplement version of an acid, and we'll tell you to go ahead and try out different doses. So you'll test out one capsule and observe your symptoms. If you get no symptoms, you'll go up to two and then three, and you'll do this over a period of a couple of days, over multiple meals, and the goal is to keep going until you feel some sort of warming sensation or reflux, at which point you know that your maintenance dose is going to be that number minus one. It's whatever number caused you symptoms minus one. So the logic goes, as far as like what we typically see on the internet, on the blogosphere, and what is typically proposed by integrated medicine doctors, the thought process is, if you have a very low level of stomach acid, say here, when normal would be, let's say right up here, if you have a very low level of stomach acid, you're gonna to have to ingest a lot of acid to get that level up high enough where you actually start to feel the symptoms. So this might be a person for whom they took 12 betaine HCL supplements without feeling any sort of symptoms or maybe even higher than that versus and again, I'm not saying this is correct yet. I'm just saying this is how the logic goes. Versus in a situation where a person has plenty of stomach acid or an adequate level or a normal pH, if they have stomach acid all the way up to the tip top of my diagram, and that's a normal level, if they take one capsule of additional acid, it's going to tip them higher than what their stomach can tolerate, and they're going to get symptoms from it. So the way that this is usually rationalized is that if you take a high dose of betaine HCL without any, supplement, or without any symptoms, then that means you have a high need for supplementation and you have a low stomach acid um, you know, baseline amount. You have low stomach acid on your own, so you need to supplement with that. And if you only get up to one or two pills before you get any sort of symptoms, then you have a robust good amount of stomach acid and you don't need to supplement. Now, here is the thing is that this is a very simple, simplistic view of what actually is going on. And, you know, it's like, what do you want for an at-home cheapo test? But there is a very big caveat that I tell all of my patients before we embark on this. And I think it's really important to note. When we talk about this test, we're generally talking just about the acid itself, right? However, the question of under what circumstances you would feel acid and feel symptoms versus where you will not is not entirely dependent on the pH of your stomach. Rather, there's a very important piece to this puzzle that is oftentimes neglected, and that is your mucus lining. Normally, you should have a nice, sorry, <laughs> you should have a nice, thick, mucus lining between your stomach wall and the contents of your stomach. So here I've drawn a nice thick mucus lining, nice green slime that's gonna protect your stomach. As an example, I would like to think I have a very acidic stomach right now and I'm blissfully unaware. And that's because I have a mucus lining that I hope is protecting me from that acid. Otherwise we would just eat our own stomachs all day. So if you have a good mucus lining, then theoretically, even if you have 
an outrageous amount of stomach acid, even if you have a pH of like one, that mucus has the capability of protecting you and you're not going to feel it. But if you have a very thin and wimpy mucus lining, that's the situations where we start to feel more of the acid reflux or get the early symptoms from this betaine HCL supplementation. So I have had cases, I just spoke with a, a girl last week where her integrative doctor had her do this challenge and she got up to like 14 pills without feeling any symptoms whatsoever. And she started to kind of be freaked out thinking, oh my God, my stomach doesn't produce any acid. I am doomed. And do I have to seriously take 14 pills every meal of every day for all of eternity? A, that's a pain in the ass, but B, it's expensive. And what we talked about in our appointment a lot was that, well, maybe that's the case, but we don't know. What is hot, more likely in this scenario is that you have a good, robust, thick mucus lining, and that is playing a role in this as well. Now, she could genuinely need some HCL support, but it's not a clear-cut case of, oh, yes, you're doomed, you have no stomach acid, versus, yeah, you're good. So if you have gone through this trial and error process and you've gotten to a startlingly high number, I wouldn't necessarily go down the, oh my God, I'm doomed road as of yet. I think that there's more to the story and it makes this test intrinsically imperfect. So the question then becomes, if you've done this test at home or if you're getting ready to embark on this test, how do you really tell what's going on? How can you tell if you truly need that acid supplement versus oh, hey, you just have a great mucus lining and it's protecting you and doing its job. The most important thing I can recommend and what I tell my patients is to pay attention to your other symptoms. Don't just pay attention to the results of this at-home test. So as an example, with the young woman that I spoke with last week, we had talked about the results of the test and how she got up to 14 pills and she didn't feel anything and it was absurd for her to take that many pills. So she just kind of landed at like five or six per day for meal. And when we talked about it, we realized that even at the high, high dose, it wasn't making a profound impact on her digestive symptoms. It wasn't like she took the 14 pills that day or that meal and her bloating was gone and everything resolved. It wasn't that simple for her. So in this case, I would start to think, and I told this young woman, that I think that there's more to just stomach acid and we could probably take a break from this and focus on other things and cut down drastically on the number of pills she has to take per day. Now, I've also had cases though, where as an example, patients with IBS or SIBO, I have them do this at-home challenge, I coach them through it, and then they come back and they say, it cured the rest of my symptoms. I could think of one woman, she was working with me for a while on SIBO, and we were making good progress, but not fully resolved. It just wasn't quite there. We had gotten her to a point where she was having symptoms and diarrhea every single day to a point where it was like a couple of times a month. So much, much better, but not fully gone. And when we finally did the betaine HCL challenge and we embarked on that, she came back a couple months later and said, the HCL completely fixed all the rest of my digestive symptoms. It's amazing and I feel like I can tolerate every food again and live my life and I'm just gonna stick with this for a while. And that was great. But we didn't purely go off of the, you know, the, the marker of where she had the symptoms as far as the reflux and indigestion from the test itself. She also noticed an improvement in her diarrhea and bloating and abdominal pain and cramping. And we put two and two together and said, well then it's helping and it's doing things downstream that we need it to do, therefore it's worthwhile staying on. So if you've done the betaine HCL challenge or if you're getting ready to, pay attention to the results and the number of pills that it takes to elicit symptoms, but also pay attention as to whether or not that supplementation is actually helping your other symptoms. If you take this high dose of betaine HCL for a couple of days or a week and you don't notice any notable change, it's probably not a big, big part of what you're dealing with and you're better off spending your time and money and effort focusing on other things like prokinetics and probiotics and food instead of just purely the stomach acid. Finally, it is worth noting that there is very strong data to suggest that proton pump inhibitors, which will lower your stomach acid, cause SIBO. There's been numerous, numerous studies. Now I will do a video about this at another time, but I'm strongly suspicious that the current research that's coming out in more recent years is how do I say this without sounding like a conspiracy theorist? Um, I think it's being manipulated. 
because there was very consistent data up until the last couple of years that strongly suggested that PPI therapy, even for the span of a month or two, will cause SIBO in a very high percentage of the population that takes them. And now in the last couple of years, as SIBO has come into the mainstream, and as these drug companies' pocketbooks are probably hurting, they have come out with a number of studies now, including some meta-analyses that say, no, there is no link between proton pump inhibitors and SIBO. Go ahead and take our drugs, they're marvelous. And I still strongly, strongly believe that they do cause SIBO, and I have seen some of my SIBO patients relapse because they got on a PPI drug. But even so, if you think about the mechanism of how a PPI works, even if it's not causing SIBO, which I do think it does for a great majority of people who take them, suppressing your stomach acid isn't the name of the game. You need to think about how stomach acid sterilizes your food so that bacteria don't get a free pass into the small intestine. Suppressing stomach acid nine times out of 10 is a very bad idea. And these drugs are just gonna cause nutrient deficiencies and quite possibly SIBO if you take them for more than a month or so. So my last kind of shtick is please don't take these drugs unless you absolutely need to. Now, of course, I'm not a prescriber and I'm not your prescriber. So I don't know your medical history and I can't really give you that advice, but just for what it is from a stranger on the internet, I would try to avoid these drugs at all costs, if at all possible. Now, if you watch this whole video and you thought, oh my God, now I don't know what to do. I'm so overwhelmed. I just want to treat my gut and get healthier. I've got good news. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. You can get guidance with a group that is supportive and nurturing, and I'm so excited for it. It's called FODMAP Freedom in 90 Days, and this is my online course that obviously helps people reintroduce FODMAPs, but the meat and potatoes of it, honestly, is going to be centered around treating your IBS, treating your SIBO, talking about things like the vagus nerve and digestive juices, and getting your motility going, and modulating or balancing your microbiota, and living in harmony with your gut again. And if you have any of these problems, if you have IBS or SIBO or leaky gut or low stomach acid or FODMAP intolerance, it's going to be a great course for you, no matter where you are in your journey. I really hope I can help you. If you'd like more information, there's a link in the doobly-doo below and in the first comment. I would be so honored to help you on your healing journey and I hope to see you there. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.